Welcome back, everybody, to Conversations with Carol. I'm here with a great guest of mine, Kavita Shane. She has the award-winning Shane Rose, and I'm here to talk to her because I want to catch up on all of this. The last time I saw this, Rose, you had a party unveiling, and that was when you first launched it. Yep. And now, since I've been in YOLO, I've seen kind of the ins and outs of business, and I want to get your update on how you're doing with the Rose. Well, first of all, congratulations on YOLO. I appreciate it. Hello. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Appreciate so it. It's really cool because I, I get to, like, after this, pick your brain about some things and learn some things from you. I'm going to pick your brain more <laughs> than you pick my brain because you're in it more than I am. Am I? You've been in it for about, what, four or five years now? Since 2017. Yeah, I launched years, it yeah. in... I launched it actually like right before 2018. So December yeah. of 2017, uh -huh. I gave birth and like literally that week I launched it as well. Yeah, I remember so, that. So yeah, I kind of birthed two babies in the uh, fall of 2017. So I also want to get into that because a lot of people, like I said, they don't understand the ins and outs of owning your own business or running in the wine and spirits industry. And I found out that it's rather complicated. There's a lot of politics in it. So I want to get your take on it, not only from a businesswoman standpoint, but as building the business from the ground up and having to deal with all those politics as a woman in this industry. You know, what's so funny is that everybody, you know, usually people will ask a woman in business, like, you know, how, how does it feel as a woman in this industry? And I will tell you, being in sports, you know, that's where I met you yeah. when I was sideline reporting. Mm -hmm. um, it was hard being a woman in that industry, but also in being in business, it's hard being a woman in that industry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Being in any industry is just different, right? So and I'm not sitting here complaining because I'm so happy yeah. with the experiences that I've had. I do feel like as a woman, you for sure need to do more research, know more, and people, and you, and it's almost like people expect more from you to be taken serious mm -hmm. in whatever you do. We do have that to kind of like measure up to, and that's okay as long as you go in knowing that, right? Yeah. So like, you know, a guy could come in and a woman could come in and automatically people will respect the men in the room, but the woman has to kind of prove herself mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense. Uh, and in this industry, as you know, there's so many, for example, if I want to sell this beautiful cup, I love it, okay, and I get to take this home, Yes, right? you do. It's yours. <laughs> Thank you. So if I want to sell this, yeah. right, um, I can post about it on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. I can do a website and I can sell it mm -hmm. direct from me. You want to buy it. You fill out the form. You put in your credit card and I can sell it to you. Mm -hmm. With alcohol, it's the three-tier system and from the prohibition. You know this. Yeah. So I have a product. You have a product. We can't sell direct it's to illegal. consumer. Yeah, it's illegal. It's illegal. Yeah. So people are always asking me, like, I want to buy your wine, this and that. I'm like, oh, I'll go to jail. You can't buy it from me. <laughs> So I sell to a distributor, and then the distributor sells to a retailer, mm -hmm. and then the retailer sells to a customer. Mm -hmm. There's so many layers, oh, and, yeah. and I don't think that that is the best way to do it, but um, you know, the distribution side is so heavily in the industry, like there's, there, there's, you know, they're, they're so big that that's the way it's going to be. So mm -hmm. anytime people try to lobby to kind of get the, you know, more for the brand owner, yeah. the distributors come in and they're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know yeah. just just going through it, and I, I know when I initially got on with uh, YOLO, there was a lot of politics for us to try and get into a Total Wine, trying mm -hmm. to get into a Southern, trying to get with different distribution companies. Were you battling with some of those same politics to try and pitch the rosé and people kind of telling you, hey, look, you need to fork up some cash to, to really get us to push it? Were you experiencing the same things that I'm going through now with, with uh, my brand? A hundred percent feel you. And it's, it's, it's kind of like a shame because you and myself, like the brand owners put so much time, effort, money, like blood, sweat, and tears into building that brand. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, you know, after it passes to the distributor and then it goes to the consumer, everybody wants it for, you know, a good price. Yeah. Everybody wants it on sale. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the distributor is like beating the brand owner for the price to go lower. Mm -hmm. And then when, at the end of the day, when you look at it, you're like, well, this is my profit per exactly. bottle. You're like, what the hell? And they're sitting there <laughs> marking it up even more when it's gets to show. For sure. Yeah. So I will say that this is definitely not an industry that if you are 
if you are wanting something to pay your mortgage, this is not your industry. It's definitely not at it's all. It's not. Like, no. thank God that I have a broadcasting career. Thank God that I have investments. Thank God that I save money because if this is all I had, like, it's something that if you have a vision for and you hope that one day you can partner or sell where you can still be on board and someone else can take it to, like, different heights that you couldn't perhaps one day, that it would be, like, I would say the end goal for every person when yeah. they start out in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it, it's really hard because for me, you know, right off the bat, like, the first year that I launched, just coming out of, like, you know, being the Jaguar sideline reporter, and then it was, like, I was doing um, UFC, mm -hmm. and I was doing GRID, and um, and then I launched this soon after. Like I said, when I was pregnant with my daughter, yeah. now I have two kids. Um, so Southern, some people from Southern did approach me, but I, I was so new mm -hmm. that I just wanted to kind of, I stayed with my original distributor and I wanted to learn the business before I went to the big boys. Mm -hmm. And fast forward to today, I'm with Park Street. So I'm okay. basically like a one woman show. And oh. I, yeah, so we're carried here. We're in New York, we're in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Last summer. Um, How'd you get in Georgia? Cause we still can't get in Georgia. I'll get you in. There we go. I'll get you. There oh, we go. Don't you heard worry. it, mom. I'll make a phone call. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it's who you know, everybody. It's who you know. <laughs> I think for sure, you know, you're a person that likes to go out, socialize, eat. And I'm a person that, for sure, since I was a little kid, always liked to go out to dinner. Yeah. And what it, what happened is I, I for sure leveraged the restaurants that I went to and was like, hey, like, I come here all the time. I promote you just for fun. Yeah. You're going to support me because I support you. Yeah. And almost all of them did. Mm -hmm. And the crazy cool thing is now I get to promote all my favorite restaurants that carry us. And That's those are the better. only ones I promote, by the way. Why not? If nobody else is really going to support you, then why not? For sure. And yeah. I, that's such a good point. And I, and I think that, you know, it's, it's very hard because a lot of times a restaurant, like if you own, for example, Nolan's, you know, Nolan's Italian. Mm -hmm. You might have a deal with a distributor, like a distributor might come to you and say like, Nolan, you can only carry my products and you have some deal with them. Mm -hmm. And that works in Florida. But then you go to another state like New York, that doesn't work. You go to another state, like it's the laws are different in every yeah, state. It's very right. complicated. You're right about that. Unless you have the right dis distribution company. Yeah, but even then, if you have the right distribution company, they're still not carried in every state. So That's like true. for me, the dream scenario would be that there's X amount of distrib distribution companies, let there be however many that they want to open, mm -hmm. and they're carried in every single state, and the laws are the same in all the states. And that I would just to, be seamless. I need to talk to you about, I won't talk to it, okay? I'm not giving people Can we secrets. just get your mom to, can we just lobby with your mom to get that passed? Because <laughs> I know that to. that's a powerful lady you got oh, as we, your mom. We do, we have some hookups. <laughs> I need to, I'll, I'll tell you about it when we get off of, of the air. I don't right, want to give out secrets. But you, <laughs> when you speak about that, you've done it all by yourself, mm -hmm. and... You actually won an award by yourself. I don't want to say it because I'll mess it up, but I want you to say it. Because you to be able to win an award, it's it's hard work because it's not just you and like 10 other brands. It's like you and a thousand other brands that have been around longer, have yeah. done more, they have more money to market. And here you come, this new engine that just kind of trumps everybody. And that right there, that, that shows brand awareness because if you're able to compete against the big boys, now you start getting attention of the other companies. So for you, how was it like when you won that award? I'm not going to say it. I want you to say it because I'll well, why can't it. you try and say it? Agricole <laughs> Concours. De? De Agricole. You said it. There we go. Bam. You got it, babe. There we go. There you go. Um, French 101 with Nolan. So, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, 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 my, my winemaker in Saint-Tropez, mm -hmm. he's right outside of Saint-Tropez. Okay. He sends me the samples and he says, I think after, he knows my profile that I like the flavor profile. Mm -hmm. So he says, these are the four that I think you would like. And I try and I like two and I don't like two. Mm -hmm. And then I say, how much can I get of this one? And how much can I get of this one? And he tells me, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's not enough. And so I was like, Phew! and I just dumped them into each other and started drinking. And I'm like, what? This is amazing. Oh. And I made a blend. You can do that. You can do that. Okay, I didn't they're know. The, you could they're do the that. same grapes. Okay. And obviously, he, you know, he did his whole, whole like, you know, scientific winemaking skills on it. Mm -hmm. But listen, it, we like to make things complicated, right? Yeah. But they're not that complicated. They are, but they're not. Yeah. So 
in essence, that is the blend that won this award. And mm-hmm. this award that we won was like, I didn't even know. I didn't even know we submitted for it. He did it like just to surprise <laughs> so you me. Had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> I'm too, I'm like busy with my kids. Like yeah. I had no idea. And you know, when it arrived, I opened the I opened the boxes and they have this award on it. And I call him up. What is this? And he's like, Kavita, he said, you know, we won the silver medal. And basically when I researched it, that's big, huge. Yeah. So this award is given by the Department of Agriculture in France. Um, I think it's over like 14 or 15,000 wines Mm -hmm. submitted Mm -hmm. and only like a little more than 300 in our region won. So when you think about those numbers, it's huge and it's not pay to play. No. Like, I'm not going to call out names, but, you know, if you have deep pockets, you can, you can, and, and it happens in America where you can pay to, you can pay to win, not yeah. pay to play, pay to win. Yeah, exactly. In France, they don't care if you're Kim Kardashian. They're going to be like, take your money and shove it up your butt. <laughs> like, they don't care. Like, they yeah. want the legit. The yes. Yeah. So this was like blind tested and it was, they didn't care who we were. They don't care who I am. And we won. And that was to me, like, just an affirmation of God being like, girl, keep going. You got this. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you know, I, you've you've done, you did my event at Dube, and that's when I first, well, no, that's the second time I tried it. I tried it at your unveiling, then I tried it at Dube. What'd you I didn't think? Even know, I liked it. I told what'd, you I liked what'd it. What'd you like about it? I like that it tastes good. And I'm not even a, a rosé You're drinker. not. I am whiskey-esque rum guy. So when I tried it, I was like, oh, this can go with some brunch. I can see some women kind of oh, being yeah. around the table on a Sunday brunch getting drunk. Totally. doing this totally that's fine i can see that but now you have kind of transcended i want to say the rose era because now i'm seeing more women getting into this industry yes. but you're unique because you're doing it as a mom yeah so i want to get into the parenting mode of this how are Ooh, you able fine. to balance <laughs> running a business an award-winning business with being a mom of two kids and staying sane at the same time you don't there's no such thing as balance, right? They're yeah. like, what's a parent hack? I'm like, there is none. No, there's none at all. There's none at all. You're just guessing every single day you wake up. For real. Because you have this idea of like what you, what you want to be as a parent. Yeah. And then you do it and it's so much messier. And if you're like a control freak and OCD like me, you're so like, crazy. Like this is not what I planned. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I've learned to roll with the punches. So um, to your question is I love to involve my kids in like my business. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate the term single mom, but yes, like I am a single mom and, um, it's just fun for me. For example, my son, I gave birth to him in May and then by May, June, July, August, yeah, by September, I took him to Hier, which is near Mm Saint-Tropez and I brought my daughter. She was like 10, 11, 12, one, maybe a little over one and, or almost one. Mm -hmm. I brought them to the vineyard. We had lunch with my winemaker. We're there all day. I'm like checking out. We're like, you know, doing the whole thing. Bring my qu- my kids. They're doing funny quality control stuff and <laughs> little things like that. And like my daughter's like a year later, we're there in the summer again. My daughter's like picking the grapes. Oh, and wow. It's just fun. So I think the really cool thing about being a parent in today's age is it's not mommy and mommy stays home with kid daddy goes to work and mommy's baking cookies with kids and then daddy comes home and then you run to the door and go daddy daddy i did have that childhood Mm -hmm. and i loved it Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that childhood i loved it that's why i feel secure and confident i had a lot of love for my parents and i was blessed to have that childhood not everyone did um but now in this day and age I feel like we have the ability, all of us, just with the way things are, not a lot of people are married. Some are married. Some are, um, you know, they have, like, life partners. Some are single. Some women actually choose to have a baby by themselves and and go to a bank and and get sperm because they don't have a partner. Whatever you choose, it's fine. But I think that the only way to do the multitasking thing and and spend more time with your kids is to, like, involve them with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not mommy's working, don't bother me. It's come over here. What do you think about this bottle? Do you like this label? Which one do you like? And then I like this one. Why do you like that one? Now it doesn't mean I'm going to pick what she likes. Yeah, but you get their input. Totally. Yeah. Do you That's feel like that with your business? Well, I don't involve my son with drinking. <laughs> but, I mean, but, you know, you could say like, but eventually, you know. No, I, I, for me, I get it because me getting involved in YOLO, I wanted something that when I'm gone from this earth, at least my son can run it after. And totally. he can pass it on to his kids. 
his kids can pass it on to his kids. That's what I'm thinking with Yola. I'm not just thinking about the money I can make with it. It's a legacy thing. And I get what you're talking about because eventually your kids are going to have to make that decision too. When you're not here or when you don't want to be involved in the company anymore, you're like, hey, Maverick, I need you to do this for me. <laughs> Day-to-day stuff. I need you to start picking new bottles or new event parties to go to. He's seen it at a young age, so now he knows, okay, this is what my mom likes. It's the same mindset. Now I, I she expects this to be done, and I'm going to do it. It's the same thing with YOLO. Everything that I'm doing, my mom's involved with it. Good. So everything that she does, I have to know. And she expects me to know it. So then when my son gets older, I'm going to expect him to do the same thing. So it's just one of those, you're just passing it down. Everybody doesn't see it that way because they only think about the money. But when you really break it down, it's, it's what you're really giving back to a family member or friends in society. That's the way I think about it. But for parenting, what is one of the things, that, going back to women, I don't want necessarily men, I don't want to go there, but with women that want to start a business but are hesitant because of their kids, they don't want to take time away from their family or they feel like they're cheating their family, chasing their dreams. What is the advice that you'll give to them to let them take that first step to not be afraid and not hesitate or think that, oh, if I do this, if I chase my dreams, it's going to hinder me as a parent. Well, before I answer that, I wanted to touch on what you said about YOLO and your family (laughs) and uh, being like this legacy thing for you guys. I think that's so great. Um, I think that a lot of what I see is parents or a parent having this amazing business and the child not being able to be involved and just looking at it as like a thing. Mm -hmm. And I think when you give a child, I I love Montessori and I love, like there's so many different like philosophies you can do when you're raising kids, but Mm -hmm. um, I love being able to get the input of a child, involve them, let them know what you're doing, let them have a voice, let them have an opinion, and therefore you grow more confident kids. And then when a lot of parents say like, I wish my son or my daughter was like, you know, wanted to take over my business. I wish they were more involved. It's like, well, did you involve them in it when you were exactly. when they were growing up? You can't just expect them to turn 21 and then go, oh, daddy, I want to be just like you. Yeah. But that's why I feel like if you involve them and let them know that they are their own person, they're your child, but they're their own person and their opinion like matters, mm-hmm. they're going to be want to be more involved with the business. Yeah. Um, and then now getting back to what you're saying for women that want to start a business that have children, I think that money (laughs) pays for your roof it pays for your coffee mugs it pays for everything your shoes your clothes and and unfortunately like that's there's no way around it Mm -hmm. you have to make money if you want to spend money you have to make money and you in order to get anything unfortunately you gotta pay for it with money so a provo- think about the life that you want and what you want for your family. It doesn't, maybe you don't care. Maybe, maybe you're like, I'm good with making this amount. Maybe you're like, I need to be a billionaire. I want to be Bill Gates. Maybe you're like, you know, I just want to make a million dollars, whatever it is. Either way, like you're going to have to work to get there. And yeah. your, your child is going to mirror you. They're going to watch you and see what you do. Mm-hmm. And I will use my mom as an example. I love her so much. She's my best friend. She literally has helped me so much with my kids. Like, just even today, she was at my house, like, watching them yeah, for me. That's cool. And it, my mom was an accountant when we were in England, and I was, like, you know, so little. I was, like, under five. We moved to America, and she didn't, like, get her certification to be an accountant here. She became a stay-at-home mom, which is great. Like, that's what she wanted. That's fine. And she raised my sister and I, and then my daughter came along, and my mom had to go back and work again for whatever reasons. Mm-hmm. And my dad was always working. And... The thing is, is I, the time that like you spend with your kid, it's quality over quantity. I want to see my, I feel bad as an adult knowing that my mom gave up her career for kid for us. I would have felt like, and and that, that was her choice and she would do it again in a heartbeat. You know what I love about your mom is like, she raises you guys so well, but she's like, I don't care. I'm going to go do my stuff. I'm going to write my book. I'm going to do my politics. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to invest in businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do speaking engagements. Like you can tell that she never gave up her zest for life and for her own, like herself, like what made her the person that your dad fell in love with to eventually create you guys. She still has that in her. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important for 
women and men to, to have that for yourself. And for a child to see that, it's amazing. So still to be yourself, but have your kids involved. Be yourself times 20. I like that. I do <laughs> like that. I definitely like that. Well, Kavita, I appreciate you coming on. It definitely is always fun. I'm glad you you told me some more about the rosé and caught me up to speed. I'm definitely, I'm always supporting because that's that's what you're supposed to do. That's what friends are supposed to do. You don't get that a lot of times. The you friends always, see, always want free shit. None of the friends support. Oh, my God. That's a, <laughs> that in itself is a whole other topic. But, man, I know. it's just, what before we even stop, what, yeah. what about that? Why do you think they just want everything for free? I always heard this one saying where strangers support you more than your friends. Why for do you sure. think that is? For sure. I don't know why that is. When I first started out I'm my career in sports. I'm still trying to figure it out right now. When I first started my career in sports, it was like I couldn't, like, I was like, hey, can you just watch my, my interview with so-and-so, whatever? Can you like this mm -hmm. and that? None of my friends really. You know, I think people don't want to jump on the train until you're in the limo. This is not all friends. Yeah. People don't want to jump in until you're in the limo. Mm -hmm. And then they want to jump in. Mm -hmm. And everyone does it. I don't know why. We gotta ask Oprah. She's a little bit more older than us. We should ask her. <laughs> Cheers. Just, Cheers. We gotta ask Oprah. Just stay to yourself. Stay motivated. Totally. Run your own race and you'll Listen, be good. Listen, that's so perfect. I have one quote I wanted to share with you because I feel Go like ahead. you and I will vibe with this. Go ahead. So Grant Cardone posted this today. Mm -hmm. You know who Grant Cardone well, of is? Of course I know who Grant okay. Cardone is. He posted this today and I was like, oh my God, that's me. Let that's me you too, I feel like. I know less about what I'm doing than where I'm going. That's true. You enjoy the process. Did we just drop a diamond? No, oh, drop the mic. <laughs> Conversation with Carol. I'm Nolan Carroll. Mm. Kavita Shanae, award-winning Shanae Rosé. Go get some, guys. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. My book, it's up to you. It's out now. Go ahead and click the link in the description.